This week on Maker Update, a beating heart, robot dreams, giant numbers, real-time object tracking, puffy bricks, and hack space goes half price. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I got a vacation coming up, which is exciting for me, but uh, the bummer is I'm gonna be taking next week off for Maker Update. So no Maker Update next week, but I have a great show for you today, so let's get started with the project of the week. My animatronic guru, Will Cogley, has an instructable up on how to create this motorized beating heart covered in a cute fuzzy fabric sleeve. Inside, you have a toy dual shaft gear motor connected to an ingenious system of 3D printed hinges that push and pull against each other to create the pumping heart motion. You'll need a bunch of M2 screws to fasten everything together. You'll also need this cool little cheap speed controller that Will found that allows you to dial the speed of the heart up and down. Without a cover on it, you have this weird plastic robot heart, but as soon as you wrap it in some stretchy jersey fabric, it's kind of adorable. Not only does Will's Instructable include the build materials and all the 3D printed design files that you need to build this, but he also includes some fabric templates to copy his plush cover design. Probably too late to get this made for Valentine's Day, but keep it in mind for next year. Time for some news. There's a new update to the Raspbian operating system for Raspberry Pi. The update includes changes to the file manager, Orca screen reader compatibility, new scratch programming blocks, an improved audio mixer, and more. You can find a link to read more about it down here in the show notes. Now for more projects, JK Brickworks posted this hypnotic new Lego automata called Robot Dreams. He calls this a GBC module, which is a new term for me that means great ball contraption. It turns out that it's a whole genre of Lego automata that you can find all kinds of mind-blowing examples of online. For this one, he has a series of four slightly different robot figures passing a ball from one side to the other. It's an incredible design, the sorting, the gearing, the little elevator that introduces the ball. It's beautiful. On the Make Anything channel, Devin Montez shows off the entirety of his giant numbers project. He's been working on this one for a while, creating a series of large numbers for a client, all created with a distinct, different style, often using different techniques and materials. Most of them involve a CNC router to cut or add texture to wood, but there's a lot of ideas and techniques in here that anyone could repurpose to bring some visual appeal to bigger or smaller projects. For a few months now, I've been looking at ways to play with real-time object detection and tracking on the Raspberry Pi. There are plenty of guides out there, but I've stumbled through enough of them to know when a great one comes along. This guide by Lee Johnson uses TensorFlow software and works with the Raspberry Pi 4 a Pi Maroni pan tilt hat, and a Raspberry Pi camera. Just by copying and pasting a handful of commands, I was able to get it running in under an hour, and the results were exactly what I was looking for. Now for some tools and tips. Hackspace Magazine has announced a new US subscription price, coming down from around $115 for a year subscription to just $60. Plus, you get a free Adafruit Circuit Playground Express board worth 25 bucks. It's a great magazine, but the price has always scared me away. So now's the time to jump on it, and you can find a special link for it down in the show notes. On the Craftsman Steady Crafton channel, I was introduced to Muggy Weld Silver Solder. This is an interesting alternative to welding that allows you to bond metal together using a map gas torch and a soldering stick. It works on brass, copper, steel, cast iron, stainless steel. It's not going to be as strong as a welded connection, but if you're doing a small repair, it will probably get you close enough. On Tested, Adam Savage shows off another favorite tool. This time, it's a handheld sheet metal break from Irwin. For under $20, it opens up all kinds of new possibilities for shaping sheet metal. On the Core 77 blog, I saw this interesting piece on how a design group called Soft Baroque created a concrete casting technique they call Puffy Brick. The process involves filling balloons with concrete and then forming them around an object like this reception desk and then squishing the sides flat with an outer plywood form. The result are these custom interlocking concrete bricks that look like some kind of alien expanding foam. I'm curious to give this technique a try. The Essential Craftsman has a new video up going over the essential differences between drills and impact drivers, the best use cases for each, and why ultimately you want both in your workshop. It's a distinction that confused me for a long time. On Adafruit, John Park's recent guide on creating a Bluetooth heart rate trainer has a great tip included on using purple lighting gels to add some extra contrast to your seven segment displays. 
It makes the unlit portion of the display sort of disappear and just gives it a more professional look. And on the Cool Tools channel, I've got an interview with woodworker Paulo Coleman on the advantages of using a flat back tape measure on projects where precision really counts. I didn't know these things existed. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they've got a new video up covering LoRa, or Long Range Digital Communication. When you need a project or an IoT device to be able to communicate at distances of up to 30 miles under low power, LoRa is the way to do that. Think agriculture, smart cities, scientific data collection. It's a cool idea to wrap your head around and also something that you can affordably play with right now using an Arduino and a LoRa breakout board. The video walks you through all the basics. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Get on the Maker Update email list so you can stay up to date on each week's show. Remember, no show next week, though, but I'll be back. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.